All right, before we jump too much into the details, I thought uh, let's start with just a, an overview of debt investments and just talk through some of the concepts because before we get to the actual accounting and calculations, I thought it'd be best for us to just get an overview and get a basic understanding of what we might be looking at, um, sort of along with my, my tips for success. This is just sort of understanding where this train is going before we all get on. So let's, uh, let's sort of jump into it here. Uh, number one important concept that you have to think about when it comes to debt investments is that uh, the firm is going to make assumptions about what they're going to do with this asset. Uh, remember, this is an asset. This is not um, the firm lending, uh, I'm sorry, borrowing money. It's the firm lending money. And so it's much different than what you might have seen in bonds payable. Uh, a lot of the calculations and things are the same, but remember, this is an asset that the firm is purchasing. So we've got to figure out um, what are we going to do with it. Uh, the assumptions are going to be a big part of it. Uh, assumptions are going to determine a lot of the treatment for accounting purposes. And so we've got to make sure that we understand how those assumptions play a role in the accounting. Uh, importantly, the assumptions can affect the way gains and losses are reported as part of net income. So an income statement could look very different depending on what assumptions are being made about the asset. In addition to the income statement, the balance sheet can also look very different. Uh, some debt securities might be listed at their um, at their original acquisition costs or at the amortized costs. Some are going to be listed at the fair value. Uh, and so these things can look different and sometimes quite different on the balance sheet. And so the assumptions are going to drive these differences. And so understanding how the assumptions are going to play a role in the balance sheet is also. Okay, so do assumptions affect real profits? The short answer is no. Uh, the firm buys securities, they receive interest payments, they sell the securities, and that's what the real profits are. But the assumptions can determine when gains and losses are recorded and potentially how they're classified. And so, uh, like anything else, you know, a, a real profit is sort of, you know, how much do I make over what I spent? Uh, assumptions don't change that. But assumptions do change. Um, how and when we account for any gains or losses that might be related to these investments. So what are real profits? Uh, more specifically, uh, what are real profits associated with debt investments? Uh, quite simply, it's the difference between what you pay and what you receive in return. Uh, as a classic example, or sort of as an easy example, if I buy a car for $3,000 and I turn around and sell it for $3,500, I have $500 of profits. That's what I received above what I paid. Uh, similarly, if I had sold it for $2,500, I would have had a loss of, of $500. It's pretty simple. So in the context of investments, uh, profits and losses uh, come from a lot of different sources. Uh, number one, profits are going to come from interest payments that are received. This is the contractual interest payments that interest payment that we're going to receive on a recurring basis because we own the asset. In, additional, in addition to interest payments, um, there is the potential for there a, to be a difference between the purchase price that I pay and the par value, which is the amount that's going to be paid when it's matured. Um, this can be a profit or it can be a loss. If I, if I purchase the, the asset for less than the par value, that's a, a discount, uh, then there will be profit from that difference between the price that I paid and the par value. Of course, I could also have a loss. If I pay more than the par value, this would be like a premium, then I would have a loss because of the difference that I paid. So I paid more than what I'm gonna receive at the end. And so that would be a loss. Even if I don't hold it to maturity, there could be a profit or loss if I sell the asset before it matures. Again, there would be a difference between the price that I pay and the price that I sell it for. If I sell it for more, I'm gonna have a profit. If I sell it for less, I'm gonna have a loss. Again, these are the major sources of profits related to debt investments. So there are three types of debt securities that we have to think about. Uh, the first one that we'll end up talking about is held to maturity. Uh, basically, held to maturity means that the firm has no intent to sell the asset before it matures. So they plan to hold it all the way through until uh, the principal or the par value is paid back. Um, there's also a classification called trading. A trading security is when the firm assumes or at least intends to sell the asset in the short term. 
I want to be clear, whether it's held to maturity or whether it's trading, these both are based on assumptions or intentions. You can sell a held to maturity security anytime you want. You can also hold a trading security for as long as you want. These are just the assumptions that the firm is making. Those assumptions um, are hopefully going to be reflecting their intent and does taint change the accounting. There is a third category known as available for sale. And available for sale is basically when the firm is not disclosing an intent to hold it until maturity, and they're also not disclosing an intent an intent to sell it in the short term. And so you've got this in-between ground where this available for sale classification kind of falls in between the two. The available for sale classification is the source of some controversy because it's this default category and the accounting is not like held to maturity and the accounting is not exactly like trading. And so uh, there is some potential confusion over the accounting. And so because of that, there's, there's at least some uh, controversy when it comes to available for sale securities. As, a, as an anecdote or as a comparison, uh, equity securities no longer have this as a separate classification. Uh, under the new uh, rules and the new standards uh, for equity securities, they don't distinguish between trading and available for sale, but we still make that distinction when it comes to debt securities.